Agrippa's place of birth is unknown. The only certain thing is it was not the city of Rome, which also made him an outsider in the eyes of Roman elites. He was born in 64 or 62 BC. He was a member of the Vispania family, but also the family name was not well known. There is some indication of Agrippa's being ashamed of his origin, mostly because his whole life he insisted on being referred to as Marcus Agrippa. Agrippa, as a part of his full name, was a cognomen, a nickname to describe a distinguished feature of the person. According to Pliny the Elder, it meant a difficult birth. It was an abbreviation of the Latin phrase Egrepartus, referring to children born with legs first. His father was named Lucius. He had one older brother also named Lucius, and a sister named Vispania Pola. Nothing is known of his mother. The old families referred to him as the Novus Homo, the new man. So most likely he was second generation of Roman citizen. His grandfather, or his father, acquired Roman citizenship after the social war between Rome and her Italian allies, or her enemies in this case. He came of age at the beginning of Roman civil war between Caesar and Pompey the Great. This period most likely left a huge impression on him and formed his future political thought. In this same period he met a bright young man, just a few months younger than himself. His name was Octavian Turinus. His father was also not a distinguished member of the Roman society, but his mother was the niece of Julius Caesar, something that will come in handy in the future down the road. While Agrippa was living in Caesar's Rome, his brother Lucius was fighting for the Pompeian forces and was captured after a battle in Africa. Urging his friend for a favor to speak with his great uncle, his brother was soon after released from captivity. The first military experience Agrippa had was most likely in Spain under the command of Caesar, at the age of 17 or 18. His friend Octavian was supposed to depart with them, but he got ill and had to stay in Rome for the time being, joining later. There's a story of Caesar's return to Rome. He embarked a ship alongside Octavian. Octavian secretly smuggled three of his friends onto the ship, fearing his great uncle's reaction, but Caesar was okay with that. The one of these men is unknown. The other was called Salvidinus Rufus, a man of humble origins, and Agrippa, of course. After the campaign was over, Octavian and his friend were sent to the city of Apollonia, in modern-day Albania, to continue their civilian and military studies. Half a year later, their lives will change forever by a content of a letter. The great Caesar was dead. Following his friend back to Rome, Agrippa's role as a trusted advisor to Octavian grew stronger and stronger. After some back and forth, Octavian, now adopted by Caesar in his will as his son and heir, was named a consul, 22nd of August 43 BC, at the age of only 19. On 27th of November, Lex Padia was passed, a law requiring prosecution of Caesar's assassins. Agrippa was put in charge of prosecuting the ringleader, Cassius. Since Cassius was long gone from Rome, he was found guilty in absentia. This was the start of Agrippa's political career. After falling off with Antonius' brother, Agrippa proved himself as being a capable diplomat too. He convinced 12,000 men loyal to Antony's brother Lucius to abandon his cause and join Octavian. He was rewarded by Octavian with the post of Praetor Urbanus. At the age of 24, he was in charge of administrating the justice in the city. After Octavian was betrayed by his other friend, Salvidinus, Agrippa was one of the last persons he can trust. Some historians argue that Agrippa's loyalty was owned to Octavian after Octavian saved his brother years before. With Pompey Sextus, son of Pompey the Great, still in control of Roman fleet, blocking the grains from east to reach Italy, Octavian entrusted Agrippa with building a new navy to crush Sextus. He also found time to deal with rebels in Gaul, province Caesar conquered. 
It was awarded with triumph in 37 BC, after the Rebellion War. When it came to naval warfare, the usual tactic was to ram an enemy ship. Since Sextus' ships were more mobile, Agrippa decided to make his ships bigger and more resistant to ramming, but also that meant that they were way slower. To overcome this, he introduced the usage of grappling hooks to grab onto enemy ship and then to pull the ship closer. He also adopted a usage of mobile bridge to board the enemy ship. And finally, towers for the archers. To hide this mega project from Sextus, he built these ships at Lake Avernus, building a channel to Lake Lucrinus, and finally connecting Lucrinus with another channel to the sea. His resourcefulness proved impeccable when he crushed Pompey Sextus and his fleet, sinking 28 of his ships, capturing the rest. 17 ships with Sextus managed to escape, but the naval blockade had been lifted. With the Roman provinces de facto being divided between two men, Octavian on the west and Mark Antony on the east, it was only a matter of time when these great men, alongside their egos, would collide. Antony was enjoying himself in Egypt, where he even threw a triumph parade for himself, which was unheard of to host such a thing outside of Rome. Antony even divorced Octavia, Octavian's sister, and married Cleopatra, the Queen of Egypt. When, finally, the opportunity for war against Antony presented itself, Octavian had to ask the Senate for official declaration of war. He was very careful to frame it as a war against Cleopatra and not another Roman civil war. In a way, he almost declared Antony unaccountable and under the influence of Cleopatra. In 32 BC, Octavian put Agrippa in charge of all military operations. Agrippa was, at the time, struck by a personal tragedy. A few years before, at the age of 27, he married Attica, the daughter of Titus Atticus. He developed a deep friendship with his father-in-law. At the age of 77, he passed away, unable to witness his biggest challenge of his career, that would happen a few months later. Agrippa applied the same strategy Pompey Sextus used against them. He was patrolling the waters of the Mediterranean, intercepting Antony's ships that were carrying supplies, and harassing coastal supply lines. On September 2, 31 BC, the two fleets finally met. Agrippa managed to secure the victory for his friend, but had to pursue Antony and Cleopatra to Alexandria and Egypt. Agrippa was named co-consul with Octavian for the years 28 and 27 BC. Octavian gave a flag to Agrippa in honor of his naval victory, which was a huge public honor. He was allowed to fly that flag on all his naval travels. Agrippa was also given valuable properties in Rome and possible in Egypt, including Mark Antony's house in Rome. Soon a political marriage was agreed between two men. Agrippa married Octavian niece Claudia Marcella. What happened with his first wife is unknown. It was clear that Octavian's inner and outer circle considered that Octavian will name Agrippa as his heir, maybe even adopt him. In 21 BC, he divorced Octavian's niece and married Octavian's daughter, Julia the Elder. He was granted tribunica potestas, a power only granted to the tribunes of the plebs, and Octavian, of course. Then he was granted Imperium Proconsulare Maius, extending his power to cover all Roman territories, except Italy. He was considered by many as a co-ruler to Octavian. The plans to make him heir, if that is what Octavian's plan was, fell apart in 12 BC, when Agrippa suddenly fell ill. The moment Octavian learned of this, he left Rome and traveled to Agrippa's villa in Campania. Unfortunately, before arriving to say goodbye to his friend, Agrippa had already passed away at the age of 51. A soldier, commander, innovator, a politician, and above all, a loyal friend, was honored even in death. Coins were minted with his face on. Gladiators games were thrown into his honor. And most importantly, Agrippa's remains were placed in Augustus' own mausoleum.